Hello and welcome to episode 22 of Shared Discovery, the show and podcast dedicated to sharing the many exciting and enjoyable aspects of games and gaming. I'm your host, Victor, and today I'm joined by a new co-host. She's been around the studio, but she's finally in front of the camera. This is Savannah. Say hi. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. Uh, I'm Savannah. It's nice to be here. (laughs) I'm so happy to finally have you on. Mm -hmm. We've had many of these conversations off camera, so it's good to have this on camera. But we need to know, they need to know who you are. Oh, no. (laughs) <laughs> right, right. I do this for all the new co-hosts. Yeah, and I forgot. You forgot. <laughs> I okay, forgot. let me let me lead you through this. Okay, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I always ask them. This is we're talking about games. So, why do you play games? What games do you like? How did you get started? You don't have to answer them all. Just like give them an idea of what makes you a gamer. So I've been playing games since I was really little, probably like four or five. Um, my dad got me into uh, fighting games. I think. If one of my first games was either Crash Bandicoot or Tekken. Mm, very different I think, games. Yeah, very, very different games. Yeah. Um, my mom really liked Crash Bandicoot. She was super good at it. Um, and I've just been playing games ever since. Uh, I really like them. I like RPGs a lot. Mm. Um, I like any game where you can customize your character. I do know that. Yes. We <laughs> ought to do the character customization episode. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> You'll I'll be just on. talk forever. <laughs> good, good. I like having expert guests mm-hmm. on here that's your expertise mm-hmm. okay <laughs> that's good crash bandicoot fighting games mm-hmm. Are those what you still like to play today what? well today i mostly play a lot of like fantasy rpgs okay. uh divinity dark souls wow things like that wow spoilers that's what we're gonna be talking about today <laughs> that's why i brought you on here because yeah. i needed i needed someone to balance me out today right so I play a lot of games that you don't like. We are, yeah, yeah, listen. We play different things. That's so we have these conversations. That's what led to this topic, right? Mm-hmm. We've had this conversation for years. I've known you at this point, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ah, I don't like Dark Souls. And you're like, ah, I do. And I'm like, you're wrong. <laughs> and you're like, well, just think about it. These are the reasons. I'm like, okay. I'm a gaming commentator now here. So let me think about it. Let me think about it. So this led to this topic. It is character skill progression versus player skill progression, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which means we're going to talk about the difference between this, right? So how does your character progress in a game versus how your skills as a player Mm -hmm. progress as you play the game? Yeah. How do you get better at the game, at playing the game Mm -hmm. rather than the character in the game just like leveling up and getting better like that? Absolutely. And to do that, we're going to look at various progression systems in games. Mm -hmm. We're going to give some examples. We're going to talk about Dark Souls. We're going to talk about WoW. We're going to talk about some of our, our most played favorite games to do this. But first, and you know, I always have a lead-in question, oh, yeah? right? So i got a question for you. Uh, hey, don't look. <laughs> well, let me ask you. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Okay. How challenged do you want to be while you're playing a game? Moderately challenged? Uh, I, I'd like to be challenged because otherwise, like... Is it a game? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I don't like... It's interesting because how I play games, you think I wouldn't like Dark Souls because it's really hard <laughs> and you get to these walls and you get frustrated. And I hate getting frustrated. I do know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's really interesting. But the thing with Dark Souls, which I'll get into later and I think I like about a lot of games, is I like to overcome those obstacles. I like to push past those limits push past your limits yes <laughs> anime anime character um, to truth. push past those limits and and prove to literally just myself that i can do this that i can be better at this game okay mm-hmm. so you're all about that this game isn't gonna beat me you, I'm gonna beat this you game. <laughs> like the difficulty because you like proving something to yes. yourself mm-hmm. okay that's awesome i like that i don't like that i don't like them too difficult i'm on the other <laughs> side I like some difficulty. I like to know I'm improving, but I'm really on the side of spreadsheet simulators. I like to see my character improving. Oh yeah, you like the stats. Numbers getting bigger, Mm -hmm. the stats, right? If it gets too difficult, I'm like, I quit, (laughs) I'm out. If you're not seeing that constant progression. Of my character, if it's too much on the player side, if it's too hard, Yeah. That's that's mm-hmm. when I'm like okay. Where it's like not. you do all this work and there's not much to show for it. Yeah, and I get that. And we're gonna get into the nuance of this as we talk about games, right? But the this idea of being too difficult 
has really led to this episode. We've talked about this. Like, why why do you like Dark Souls? You don't even like you don't like difficulty. You don't <laughs> like challenge. And you're like, but I do. I but like I do. overcoming it. Sometimes. Yes, it, sometimes. It depends. Okay, it has so that to be leads the right kind. to the main topic. Here. Mm-hmm. And I found a few articles. I put the YouTube link without referencing it. Good professional podcasting yes. here. So I don't remember what that video is. <laughs> but I found this article from it's a design article about player skill, character skill, and skill progression systems. Mm-hmm. So this has really helped guide this article quite a bit. It, this is from gamedeveloper.com. So I think before we even start, we need to define what progression means, yes. the word. We mm-hmm. like our words around here. We like so vocabulary. We like vocabulary. It helps to set mm-hmm. the stage for the episode. Exactly. So go ahead, read to them, let them know what progression So is. progression is the process of developing or moving gradually towards a more advanced state. Mm. You know, you're trying to get better. You're trying to move ahead. Yes. So that keep that in mind for Gradual. this whole mm-hmm. episode is when we're talking about the two axes here, the player skill and the character skill, they're either your character's gradually getting to a more advanced state or you as a player, your mm-hmm. skill, how fast you're, you're becoming timing. a more advanced, advanced player. Advanced player. Mm-hmm. So think about that. Progression means improvement. Yes. Right? Okay, so let's start with player skill. So player skill, we're going to define it like this. It's the skill the player has at the game they're playing. Wow, whoa, you just just said the same word. Okay, let's talk, let's dive (laughs) that a little bit, right? So accuracy of your shooting, right? Timing your dodge rolls. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is going to look like evading projectiles. Pattern recognition. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good one. Evading Mm -hmm. projectiles is part of that. Platforming. Yeah. <laughs> or memorization, that goes into it as well. Mm-hmm. Right? So this is the things that as you're playing certain mechanics in the game will emphasize things that you you literally have to do better. Yes. So this brings us to a concept that I like. It's called how deep is a game? Mm-hmm. You hear this a lot. And I was like, yeah. well, how much depth is there to yeah. that game? Yeah, how much depth is there to the game? Is it, very, is it shallow? Is it surface level? Mm-hmm. Or does it go beyond that? Like, what is it? tell you so what does deep mean so games that offer a lot of room in their mechanics for players to develop their skills lots of combos versus fewer combos right and so when we're talking about deep we're to looking at these games that allow for a lot of room Mm -hmm. for you as a player to improve yes and so again there's going to be we always talk about magic Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gathering here but there's a combo, a combo being a... A combination of things that makes a different mm -hmm. thing. (laughs) Yeah, a combination of two pieces, mechanics, cards in this instance, that you put together and you get a bigger outcome than just the two cards separately, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Magic has over 30,000 cards at this point. Oh gosh, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) So it's a game that allows for a lot of players' A lot of very different combos. A lot of different combos because it allows players to figure those out. And it's not always just one thing and one thing. It could be a string of things Mm -hmm. that runs on like an engine. Absolutely. And the most simple version is the one and one. Yeah. Right? I play this card. I play this card. One plus one equals four cards. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right? You're getting more than what you got. Mm -hmm. Or I play this card. I play this card. I win the game. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's not... card combo. You're not going to find that in every game. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Match is kind of unique in that instance, right? But that... Players, games are deep when it allows players to find those combos or think about fighting games. Oh, yeah. You know, learning the different combos by going to um, the character's like skill page. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you would call that, but yeah, there's their like, moves. Yeah, there's like move, menus, move, move sets. Tools, mm-hmm. outlet, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, where it shows you like all the different buttons to press in which order, what kind of sequence to do to do these big mm. combos. Mm-hmm. And I never paid attention to those. I button mash. Button mash. Yeah, if I button mash in fighting <laughs> games. <laughs> or I tried to do it one time with Soul Calibur, and I didn't understand what they were doing, mm-hmm. what they were saying, because it was for PlayStation 2, and they were like, yeah. A, and Y, and I'm like, what? <laughs> what does this mean? I so know. I didn't understand. You didn't understand. So it allowed for you to play the game, but it was wide open and very deep for you to improve as a Yeah, if I, if I was able to. If yeah. you were able to, if you understood the concepts better, and there are absolutely mm-hmm. are people that understand. That. Yes. Think about um, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Oh, yeah. It's over 20 years old at this point. It came out on the GameCube. People are still finding new mechanics. 
Smash Bros is crazy. <laughs> Isn't that crazy, right? So people are still finding new mechanics, still bringing characters that were considered bad to the forefront. I mm -hmm, think a mm -hmm. case of this I watched was Jigglypuff. <laughs> In that game, people just assumed it was bad. Yeah. But now it's there's one character who decided to learn absolutely everything about that character in mm -hmm. the game and, and how is to winning. Push the, how to push them past their limits. Push them past <laughs> their limits like an anime protagonist. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be the very best at this one specific thing mm -hmm. just to show you, <laughs> just to prove you wrong. So fighting games are notoriously not... Well, notorious is bad. Are famously... Famously. Famously deep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Um, they look like they're surface level because it's like you just press buttons to beat each mm -hmm. other up. But the, the combo screens um, the, is very, very in-depth. Yes. Um, and you need to be a very skilled person to figure those out. Oh, yeah. Whether it's by accident or by literally looking through their, their combo menu mm -hmm. and memorizing all of that. And studying other players, getting yeah. into the nuance there. This goes back to how we define player skill, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking about Smash Bros. in particular, like timing your evades, timing your shields, your jumps. Your and jumps and mm -hmm. and it's it's crazy. Any dashes. It's so crazy yeah. watching top-end players. <laughs> so we argue here that depth is completely on the axis of player skill. Mm -hmm. That there's some conversation to be had there, yeah. and we will. But depth is highly leaning towards player skill. Okay, so character skill. Take it away. Tell them about oh, character okay. skill. <laughs> the skill or power of the player-controlled character through narrative and/or gameplay mechanics. An example is leveling up. The mm -hmm. most simple way to for a character to progress. <laughs> yeah, pretty straightforward. You know, it's unaffected. By what the player does mostly like you do the fighting to get them xp to level up but them leveling up what they get when they level up is usually not determined by you exactly by your skill it's the game exactly so their stats and strength increase they do more damage the next level mm -hmm. right i'm doing five instead of four damage because I got another point of strength. Mm -hmm. It's not because I timed anything yeah, better. Yeah, it's not because I'm hitting them better. <laughs> it's not because I'm aiming at their weak spot or timing a dodge roll or mm -hmm. parry, anything like that. It's just the character within their in-game universe has more strength now. Yes. And so that's a very classic one across RPGs, right? Is that they level up, they do more damage per mm -hmm. attack. They or get more skills to do the things. Thinking about like They items. get more health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, health, right? Mm -hmm. Like they can take more hits, not because you're dodging better. Yeah, just because the because literal they have health, more health is more. <laughs> the number's higher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or think about like gearing up. This is an example of this. Mm -hmm. Like you give your character a better weapon, they do more damage. You give your character better armor, they take less damage. Take less damage. But that's not you getting better. That is your character improving yes. within the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are the two axes this episode's gonna, gonna go back and forth between. But let's talk about what a progression system is. We talked about progressing, but what is a progression system? So in this article that I mentioned at the top of the hour, the progression system is what controls the degree of importance of a player's skill versus a character's skill. Mm -hmm. Right, so this is how the game uses its mechanics to allow you or your character improve. Yes. Right, so like the leveling system. Leveling systems is a good, very good example of that. <laughs> right, or skill systems, which mm -hmm. gets us into this. Like a skill progression systems are very becoming very common in yeah. games. Right, so the skill progression system specifically is a design concept that has existed in video games for years now, but it allows players. Um, to slowly get more mechanics throughout the course of the game. Mm -hmm. Think about WoW, mm -hmm. think about like Grim Dawn. When you level up, you're able to get these new skills that mm -hmm. will, will change your play style. But you're not getting those skills because you're better at the game. It's just because of leveling. Yes. But the game is... Put in the system for yeah. you. <laughs> well, you're going to start... Yeah, the game put that in there for you. The developers put that system in there for you, but... This skill progression system says, I'm going to start out with a few mechanics. Mm -hmm. Think about, wow, we'll go back to wow here. You get I'm, your basic attack and you get like one spell maybe. <laughs> one or two spells. Yeah. At level one, that's all you get. Mm -hmm. And then as you level, it gives you more spells as your character grows. And then to learn those spells, you have to grow as a player yes. as well. Mm -hmm. So a good progression system 
has both. Has, is going to encourage both of these, yes. right? So a pro of this, right, like as we already stated, a benefit of these skill progression systems is games with mechanics that are too complex mm. for a player to fully understand at the start of the game, yeah. they can just be given to them in pieces, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm over time by revealing these new mechanics. So like introducing new abilities, introducing new obstacles into the game, mm -hmm. or deepening an existing mechanic. Ooh, yeah. Right? Uh, so that's a big pro of these, is like slowly allowing the player to improve with with the character. Yes. Um, one thing that, that I like uh, about Crash Bandicoot is that you you progress as a player because Crash, he doesn't really progress as the character. Throughout levels, beating levels, you'll get different like power-ups, but you still have to learn to use those power-ups effectively. Mm. So you get them gradually, which I really like that system. I mm -hmm. love Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, but you have to learn how to use those effectively. Um, otherwise, if they gave them to you all at once, you would be overwhelmed and not know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so... The so, power-ups that you get in Crash Bandicoot, so when you get them, do you have them for the rest of the game, or are they temporary? Um, that's a good question. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure hmm. you have them for the rest of the okay, game. Okay, so if you have them for the rest of the game, that means that on the character skill axis, from our definitions here, Crash has improved. Yes. He has progressed. Mm -hmm. But also, the mechanics, the way that they're given to you, require you a lot of immense player skill to yes. use properly. Which, which is why I think it's such a great game, because mm. it requires both. Okay. Um, I like that example a lot. But I brought that up because of the con of, of this system, mm -hmm. is if it's done poorly, it can actively impair the player's enjoyment mm. of the game. Mm -hmm. So like I was saying, like if they gave you all of these different skills all at once, you would get a little overwhelmed and yes. you wouldn't know how to use them all effectively. So it being like, okay, you're Crash, you can jump and you can spin around, and then later you get the ground slam, and then later you get double jump, yeah. or stuff like that. Doing it throughout the game. Uh, can you imagine <laughs> if Crash had all his abilities right at the start of a game? It wouldn't, f it would feel overwhelming, and then I feel like you would forget what a lot of them. Oh, you yeah. would forget what skills to use, you wouldn't, know where to use them that's a good point. because usually when you get a new skill the level you go to right after requires that skill and that's so just you good level it. design yes <laughs> that's like uh, building a tutorial into the game exactly yeah i, I like love that. when games do that i it's love so that good. yeah and so you talked about that con of being overwhelmed and what i think about immediately we talked about wow the pro of them giving you a couple mm -hmm. like two or three right at the beginning. Basic attack, maybe a couple skills. But mm -hmm. in the past, I've wanted to try a private server. Right? Okay. And private servers range in qual like, can be anything from the same thing, but for free, yeah. or a server where you start at max level with all the skills. <laughs> so I'm thinking about those servers oh where goodness. you start with everything, and I'm like, like, uh, like, I don't like know. what skills do you choose? Where do you put them on your I don't know how bar? to use them. Yeah, yeah, you don't know how to use them. You I don't, don't have the experience. You haven't learned how to use mm -hmm. them effectively and properly exactly so that requires so like much other. of me and i always quit them because yeah. i'm like i can't i can't <laughs> i don't know any of this i want them the tutorials to be given to me mm -hmm. over time i want there to be a tutorial after i get the skill it's really good <laughs> because uh like in wow like when you level up you get out of like the starting area you get new skills you want to use them immediately, immediately. and see what they see mm -hmm. what they do and so that's like your little training arc yep. you you see how, okay how does this skill work how do i use it effectively and can it be combined with other skills that yes. I'm, I'm using and then that's more player progression absolutely figuring out how how these different skills work together so you can make some cool interesting combos absolutely Okay, so we talked about this con of overwhelming players. Another con here that I wanted to highlight is potential hand-holding. Mm -hmm. And we've heard this a lot in recent years with games, but essentially what this is, is any feature that puts a how-to-play type instructions during your face in gameplay. Yeah. Uh, or it reminds you of a game's mechanic constantly throughout and a game. you don't need to. <laughs> or, it doesn't need to. Or it just solves the problem for you. Yeah. It's like, hey, I've noticed you're having trouble with this. Do you? Here's the answer. And you're like, no, 
Let me figure it out. Some this is the game. Real egregious examples of this is like the game actually taking control of you. Yeah, and, and being like, you you're, go here. Like uh, uh, Pokemon. Don't, don't take my autonomy away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pokemon is a real bad example of this. With these past recent, recent yes. generations. I actually quit Sun and Moon, 7th gen, because of that. It's funny. I got through it, and then in Gen 8, I was like, can't. <laughs> I, but I didn't even try Gen 8 because I was so frustrated mm -hmm. with Gen 7's hand-holding. Because at the beginning of that game, they're like, hey, come here. And it's like, oh, you're, okay, hey, now here. you're in this town, and hey, you can wander here. around, and so you try to take two steps, and it's like, no, you're supposed to go over there. And I'm like, but what? It Why do you even give yeah. me control then? <laughs> it takes you to a city, and you're like, finally, I get to go to the city. And you go in a certain direction, like, nope, come back here, and it forces you in that and then, That's frustrating. Yes. So, hand-holding like that, or like... I can't think of a, of a perfect example, but say you're, you're playing a game, you have these skills that you've had for a little bit, and you're in a fight, and it's kind of a hard fight, and then like a little tutorial thing just pops up, like, hey, uh, maybe you should try using this, and it's like, shut up, go away, I've been like playing this game for a while. <laughs> big on your screen. Yeah. Like, so the hand-holding can be really frustrating, mm -hmm. right? And I think there should, there should be a tutorial, and then if you get a new skill, have a little mini tutorial on how mm -hmm. to use it, mm -hmm. um, either by practicing, or by being like, here, here, here's how you use it. Yeah. Like, the, like double jump by pressing this button, and then you're good. <laughs> and then immediately having a player use that in some way. Exactly. I think that's really good design there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have talked about player skill and character skill, but we're going to talk about some of the what those mechanics Ooh. actually look like. Yes. We gave some examples, but let's give some more here. So I'll let you take the player skill. So mechanics. player skill mechanics include combos, range management, aim, timing management, when to reload, you know, your movement, mm -hmm. um, just a lot of managing, basically. Managing your skills, managing your time, managing the, <laughs> the distance, yeah. the range. Memorization, yes. just knowledge in mm -hmm. general is really important here. But these are things that you can get better at mm -hmm. in a game, like right? Like pattern recognition, if you're mm -hmm. fighting a boss of whatever game mm -hmm. over and over, you're, mm -hmm. you're gonna learn it's movements. You're gonna learn how it works, and that'll you'll get better. You'll know when to when to properly mm -hmm. dodge, uh, and all that. Yeah, <laughs> Where its hitboxes are. Shooters, right? Like, oh gosh. Oh man, what, when and where to aim mm -hmm. on players? Mm -hmm. When do when I to reload? reload? Things like this. How do I make use of this new movement option they gave me? How do I make use of this double jump and air dash? Mm -hmm. right. Things like these that it's like, okay, I can go this far with this air dash. Can I make that gap? Yeah. Can I make that gap fast? Can I make this jump? And you're going to keep having these improvements as a player. Mm -hmm. Okay. Character skill mechanics. So these are things like ability scores, improving your damage on abilities and weapons, right? Getting new gear, mm -hmm. putting new, getting more strength, getting more agility, mm -hmm. faster reload time. So little things like loadouts, yeah, right? Things that are like passives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, loadouts. I like yeah. that. Yeah. And so, and then are like less recoil, like passives, mm -hmm. loadouts, whatever you want to call them. It's like, I, I pick this thing and it's just going to happen all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't have to even worry about it. I think, so something that highlights both of these very well is Gears of War and their reload system. Okay. So Gears of War has a reload system where when you reload your gun, there is a small window that if you hit the reload button again, you instantly reload. Oh, that's cool. So that becomes a player skill mechanic mm -hmm. of when do I reload and do I... And can I time can this Can I right? time it properly mm -hmm. in the key to battle? timing it. Exactly. I've never played Gears of War. It's a very cool, very cool mm -hmm. uh, franchise for sure. Oh, wow, we finished a sheet. Cool. I want to do this thing because y'all always throw it that yeah, way. We... I want to do that. What? Is it <laughs> behind you? Yeah, it's funny. That's crazy. That's <laughs> crazy. I'm going to throw it in front. I always okay. I wanted to whip it around. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we got we defined our system. Yes. We designed some of the mechanics. But now we want to give some examples. And we've touched on some examples throughout. But with this part of the episode is going to look like. So we're going to talk about games that we like, and we're going to determine which form of progress to help you as the players determine which form of progression that you value the most. Mm -hmm. So this is going to look like how much we think each game emphasizes player and character skill by defining what the progression system looks like. Then we're going to give some pros and cons to that progression system. Okay. So it's behind you here on set. 
our World of Warcraft shrine. And so I think it's only fair. We've been talking about it quite a yes. bit at this point. Because we're just, we're excited. We're really excited. We're going to talk about World of Warcraft. But caveat here. Our experience with World of Warcraft comes um, predominantly with the classic version vanilla. and the classic vanilla version of the game and Burning Crusade. Yes. This. We have not played retail. I have not played any expansion uh, yeah. after Burning Crusade. <laughs> yes. So this is where this deep dive is going to come from. Mm -hmm. So bear with us if you're like, I'm playing the newest version and that I, you and have it might no have idea. something different <laughs> we don't know about that you have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> well tell us in the comments yeah. send us an email I'll get, get that content <laughs> content baby okay world of warcraft vanilla right so 1 to 60 1 to 70 and the way that this progression system works is just a brief overview you make your character and you make from 8 to 10 races you pick a race and then you pick one of nine classes mm -hmm. The class that you pick and the race that you pick will determine your starting stats and your starting abilities. Mm -hmm. There's some overlapping abilities between all the classes. Like every single class has a basic attack. Yeah. Every single class can use professions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Every single class can use first aid. Yes. <laughs> right? But uh, the, well, the, it's necessary. It's necessary. It, use your first aid. Use your bandages. Use your bandages. They. They help a they lot. Save your life. <laughs> but you drop into the world, you start in yours. Everyone has, each race has their own little starting little zone. Starting zone. And you'll start at level one, and you'll start with your basic attack, your race's passive ability. And they usually give you a weapon. They give you, oh yeah, you'll yeah, have you your weapon. Yeah, you start with a weapon, so you're not just punching things, <laughs> yeah. unless you want to. <laughs> it, you know, it's just start with your weapon, and then a, an ability or two. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about the druid here. Okay, so a druid is a caster that gets its magic from nature. Druid's my favorite. Right. So, except I don't know much about the WoW druids. So we're gonna talk about <laughs> we're gonna talk about how about the night elf druid because mm -hmm. she's behind you there. <laughs> so a night elf druid will get basic attack from a staff or a dagger. Mm -hmm. Probably not a dagger because they that's metal from a staff. <laughs> huh. Maybe. I think they can, I can they use, can use, use like bludgeoning Yeah, they can use daggers. Anyway, yeah. Confusing myself here. But they'll get that, a passive ability, which the night elves can turn invisible if they don't move. It's Yay. called Shadow Mount. And then they get an ability called Wrath. It's just a 1.5 second oh, it's a magic energy. It's like a, it's like a beam. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yep. That's, That's what you got to do. That's what so you get. So if you want to go like the caster route, you're just, you're shooting mm -hmm. beams of wrath so, over and over. So you, you want to do more melee, you're hitting stuff with a stick. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, it. It'll look different as you level, but that's all you got in the that's beginning. That's all you got in the beginning. So you do, you do that. You kill the mobs, which the mobs are easier in the beginning. Yes. Again, scaling things down to help players learn. Every two levels in this game, you get either a new skill or a talent point. Mm. Right. So talent points come at level 10, and then every even level after you'll get another well, no, that's wrong. You get a talent point every single level, and then you get a skill every even level. Okay, mm -hmm. yes. And so you're always getting these new new mm -hmm. skills, these new mechanics, these new abilities. And it gives it to you very gradually, so mm -hmm. you have a couple levels or a level or so to get used to it mm -hmm. before it gives you something completely new that'll change your build. Absolutely, and the gear that you get early on, it's going to be a white gear, right? Yeah. So the common, it's going to be generic. It's going to be generic. It's not going to have any fancy ability scores or mechanics mm -hmm. that you need to learn. So it slowly gives you these things. So which for me, that tells me that it's very high on the character skill progression. Yes. You get, your character is getting new abilities. They're getting new armor all the time. Mm -hmm. They're getting new talents that give them new skills or give them new ability yeah. modifiers. What you can do is based solely on what your character can do mm -hmm. and what skills yes. they have. Absolutely. So it's like this is so Where you so take high. control is just you mm -hmm. know, sequencing. Absolutely. And it's super high on the character skill. But it's, I would say it's actually pretty medium yeah. to high on, on the player, player skill. skill as well. Because like if you have these all of these skills that are really good and you don't like know how to use them or use them like efficiently, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a bad time. You can get through the. We talked about this. Oh, yeah. We talked about this uh, pre-show. You can get through the game. <laughs> you can 
Never use totally keybinds. You can click all your skills. You can stand in one place. Mm -hmm. Take fight one mob at a time. You will get through the game. It'll just take a while. It'll take a while. You might die more, but you get through the game. But if to maximize your fun with the game, as these skills get introduced to you, you're going to want to improve. You're going to want to move in combat, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? You're going to want to time when you use your spells. You're going to combine spells like yes. we talked about. So let's talk about, we'll put some terms to these, right? So character skills, improved base stats every level, better weapons and ability damage, stronger gear, gems. Mm -hmm. What are some of the Enchantments. Enchantments, yeah. What are some of the player skills? You know, the new abilities, like I was talking about, learning how to use them, positioning. So... If you're like mm -hmm. a rogue, you want to backstab, you want to yeah. be behind the target. That's a very good example. Um, the cooldowns, you mm -hmm. know, every skill, not every skill, but most skills could have a cooldown, so you have to time that, you have to pay attention to it to when you can use it again. Mm -hmm. um, resource management, management, so like with... Money. <laughs> well, with casters, you know, you have your mana, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. rogues, and uh, uh, some other thing, they use stamina. Energy. Energy, yep. close enough. Yep, robed and the druid's cat form. So back to the druid, mm -hmm. right? The druid has a mechanic that they get to shapeshift, yes. which makes them so unique. They get mm -hmm. to shapeshift into a bear, a cat, a, <laughs> what is that? Like a manatee? Like a waterfall? Yeah, yeah it's, the, it's like a seal. Yep, they get to turn into a bird that lets them fly around. <laughs> they get to turn into an owl. It's more, it's more like a walrus or a seal. Yeah, it's not really a manatee. Like, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And, and they then they like turn into a bird. I've never bird. heard of bird. Uh, you can choose to get a tree form that improves yes. your healing. Mm -hmm. so, I love the druid because there's like there's a play style. For everything. For everything in this one class. You can go DPS. You can go tank. You can go healer. You mm. can do all three if you feel like it. You can, absolutely. <laughs> and so these shape-shifting abilities, the cat is really good at prowling, and it's like a little, like the, a lot like the rogue yeah. and stealthy. And then the bear is like a warrior in mm -hmm. your face. It uses rage. Uses rage. Which is which another, another resource that the warriors use. That warriors generate by doing damage. Mm -hmm. So these shape-shifting, this is also very highly tied to player skill like yes. a druid it probably has one of the highest skill caps in the game because you need because to know so many things yeah and the last use point on here is knowledge so mm. knowing mm -hmm. what your skills are capable of yep. what your class is capable of and then what you're capable yeah. of what you need to know all of these things what other classes are, other classes are capable yes. of and what the enemies can do to either hinder you mm -hmm. or hurt you you gotta you gotta know all of these things and what i will say too so for our our axes here so high character skill but i would say it's pretty medium on player skill you mm -hmm. can get through the game without being a great player but pvp player versus player i would say it's pretty very high or very skill. high player skill if everyone has the same like level of gear right the character skill is equalized mm -hmm. oh there's still gonna be people better than, better that than is you such high player skill there so what are the pros the pros of this system of this system are enjoyment and easy access for players of various skill levels. Mm. A lot of room for player mastery, like we were just talking about yeah. with the PvP. And then you know, if you don't want to do PvP, you can still enjoy the game while not progressing as a player. Mm -hmm. Like, doesn't mean you're a bad player; it just means you're different. You're just different, and that's what's so good. And I think that's testament to the longevity of this game yeah that's why wow is still around that's why it's still around it's so good and so good because there are players who want to be the best like no one ever was yeah right that want to push themselves that's my friend vine he loves that pvp aspect mm -hmm. of the game he loves his arenas and putting his skill as a player against others and then there are players that uh just want to do herbalism to level up yeah because they're, they're memes who want to chill yeah, yeah just want to chill and enjoy the world some people like the role-playing aspect. Some people just want to see the environment and level at their own pace. Mm -hmm. And the game is very wide open for the various types of players. So tell us about the cons of this system. Okay, so the high emphasis on character skill can create these level walls that no amount of player skill can overcome. Yeah. So what this means is that if I'm a level 7 player and I try to fight something that's level 12. <laughs> no matter how good of a player I am. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. Yeah, it's gonna be hard. 
and like, there there are these boss walls mm-hmm. there are these enemy walls mm-hmm. in this zone that things are gonna kill you yes absolutely and so that can be frustrating for people that really high value skill it's like well i can't now I have to grind. Yeah. And grinding doesn't take skill. Yeah, it just takes <laughs> it just, time. It just takes time. So there, that can be frustrating for players that really love player skill. Um, also, the character stats and gears can often overshadow player skill. That's true. So if you just have better items, better level, better item, gear, better whatever than someone else... No matter how good you might they not are. even have to be good. <laughs> you might not even have to be good. You might just have to hit buttons. Yeah, you'd just be a frost mage. <laughs> you brought up the most skill intensive <laughs> class in the game. Oh. Mages. Yeah. I'd say mages and druids are very high mm-hmm. on the skill meter. <laughs> um, but I'm saying, like, someone who's max level and who's been max level and grinding raids and getting gear yeah. for months to someone who just got there. The player that just got there might be a better player, but they're not going to overcome that. Gear. The geared out dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so then pvp is more at least for classic pvp is more player skill focused while pve is just character skill focused mm-hmm. there are whole pve dungeons where you just hit a button yep you don't have to move <laughs> they've remedied that a lot in recent wow where they've added a lot more skill into the raids mm-hmm. how you move how do you use mechanics to stop certain bosses but back then you could just Button, button, I'm just button, gonna, button. I'm gonna cast the same spell. <laughs> Wand. Mm-hmm. So that's wow. That's uh, let's wow. let's go on to wow. let's go on to, let's go to dark, dark souls. Dark, dark souls. So, what so is, I will uh, preface the, this by saying yeah, preface. I've only played Dark Souls three, Bloodborne, and now Elden Ring. So I'm not the most uh, knowledgeable of the whole Dark Souls franchise. Well, guess but what? More than you. <laughs> guess what? You're the expert here. I'm the expert here. <laughs> <laughs> So, Dark Souls. Okay, tell us about the progression system within Dark Souls. So, the progression system is, you you level up, but it is very high intense uh, player skill progression. um, Because no amount of levels will mean you're good at the game. Like, you can grind for hours, you can grind forever and get to, like, the highest level you can think of or whatever. But if Mm. you're bad, you're still going to die. Yep. Like, if you don't know how to dodge, if if you can't time your potions correctly, you're still going to have a bad time. You can't memorize boss mechanics. Yeah. Yep. Like, movements. You, you have to learn their patterns. You have to learn mm, when they is. turn phases, um, because there's always, like, at least two or three phases yep. in these boss battles. Um, and you need to learn even just the, the random enemies mm. that are out in the world. You mm-hmm. need to learn, like, their patterns, their, their walking cycles and okay. stuff. Um learn when they come out what they're gonna do Mm. and all this stuff so (laughs) very compare this to wow right so in dark souls you're killing mobs you're getting souls you're leveling up you're getting more health you're getting more stamina but they're if you're not good you get hit like no amount of health is gonna yeah keep you alive like think about the more health you have the longer you will survive but you st- you'll still probably die because the you bosses always have more health. If and you do more still damage. don't know what you're doing, yeah, <laughs> no amount of extra hits are going to mm-hmm. help you. But in WoW, think about like, there's this mob. Back to our level seven example, seven and eleven. I'm level seven. I get killed by level twelve. I said right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to get to level sixteen and I'm going to one shot this thing. Yep, you can't do that in Dark Souls. You can't do that in Dark Souls. Like, um, I have a character that's like level two hundred thirty something. Because me and my friends used to cheat. Um, what? Oh, Wait, didn't you listen? We did some cheats. To our etiquette episode? No, no I cheating. wasn't here. <laughs> um, that was board game etiquette. You're uh, fine. <laughs> that's true. Um, so I'm, st- I'm level like 230 something. And I, I still struggle with the bosses. Mm-hmm. Because like they're still hard. No amount of level. Like I can have a, a health bar that's almost like a boss's. And they still hurt. <laughs> they yeah. still hit me a lot. I've played this game a lot. So but you, I'm still not very good. Yeah? Okay, so where do you think on um, player skill and character skill these rank? Player skill, very high. Very character high. skill is, like, not at the bottom, but pretty low. It's pretty low. It's pretty low because, like, the, the skills that you get 
the weapons that you get don't exactly matter to your level. The weapons that you can use matter to your ability scores. So like your strength, your dexterity. So that mm. kind of matters like levels. Okay, so there's like requirements. You yeah, know, there are requirements. Well, okay. And then, um, you know, if you want to do magic, you have to have a certain amount of like intelligence, um, which increases your, your mana bar and sure. stuff. So that's resource management. Um, also, magic is the, the best to use in Dark Souls. It's OP. They use it for speed running. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? Um, but it's still, you still have to be good. You still have to know the sequencing, know the enemy that you're fighting. Yeah. Do all of those resource management. And what's crazy is some of the basic mobs. You, you <laughs> don't know what they do. They will still. <laughs> they could literally just, you could be doing fine, and one could sneak up behind you and kill you. Yeah. For no reason. So. Like, just out of nowhere. Back to... <laughs> you could get hit by a crab. <laughs> player skill is high. It's really very, very high. high. It's like the highest so I like think it could be. Low to medium on the character skill, mm -hmm. where your character is improving, but it's not enough to, o to yeah. overshadow or overcome your need for player skill. Yes. Okay. So what? let's see what some of those actual mechanics are. So, uh, the player skill, or no, character skill, are more potions. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. progressions, I mean. Yeah. Uh, is getting more potions... Uh, stat increases and mm -hmm. better gear, mm -hmm. like I was talking about. So you get more potions, you're able to heal better, you, uh, heal more. Mm -hmm. So your resources stay stay fuller. Your health and your magic are the resources that you can replenish. Your stamina replenishes over time. Mm. Um, but there are things to increase it as well. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, then... What are some of the player skills? I know we talked about a lot of them. What are uh, these? Memorization, yes. timing, oh, and positioning. Man. Dodge rolls. Dodge rolls, dodge get rolls. Get good, don't get hit. Yes. What about, can you parry? <laughs> yes, you can, and I'm bad oh, at it. Oh, okay. You can that's, parry. That you parry like with a shield. High skill. Yes, it's very high skill because you have to have such precise timing to parry attacks away. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if you can parry bosses. You probably can. I don't know. Yeah, that's I don't. Problem. I don't do it. I'm bad at it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I roll high. around. You got to get that timing. And hide. <laughs> like that, this is clearly, as you a player, how much can you time? Mm -hmm. Your rea it's your reaction time. That's yes. what it is, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because like a lot of your first fight with a new boss is just running away from it and seeing what the heck it's gonna do. Mm -hmm. At least that's for me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what are the pros of the system? The soul system promotes the intended fear of the game. Wanting to improve your character skills requires improving player skills. Very good for mastery-oriented players. So if they want to be the very best that there ever was, <laughs> um, you already did that joke, but I stole I it. Yes, yes. So if you want to o overcome all of these obstacles by just getting better at the game, this is the game for you. <laughs> You're going to spend a lot of time and a lot of death. Yes, you are. <laughs> and it's... If this is rewarding for you, this is where you want to be. If you're like, yeah. I like that I have this precise timing. Mm -hmm. If I, I like to be the character. On you're those, very in control. Those, yes, high, high control. Like no one will ever say that the mechanics aren't pristine, precise in this game. Mm -hmm. You die, it's your fault. Yep. Right. That's what you're gonna. That's often what you will hear yeah. a lot from player, high player skill games. Mm -hmm. It's your fault. Yep. And sometimes, I, like me, I don't want to hear that. That's why the death screen is so brutal. You died. You died. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. And, but <laughs> this pro here is, I, what I like is that since you want to improve your character, it's a progression system that requires you to get better to see yes. more of the game. Yeah. Very well designed yes. in that aspect. They knew what they were going for and created a system to reward that. Yeah, because if you want to explore the game, you have to get good. You have to beat these bosses to open up new areas, mm. to see more of the game, and to learn more of the, the lore that is confusing. <laughs> I guess I better do this. This is the cons. Oh, yeah, the cons. Right. Yep. Okay. So if you're someone like me who likes your games to lean a little bit more into the character skill, you might be upset that you can't grind through your problems. Yeah, I've tried. And it helps very little. <laughs> and this means that there's going to be a soft cap on the effectiveness of your character's progression, meaning player skill is mandatory. Yep. There's no way around it. You have to improve. We've been saying this, but you have to. And if you don't want that in your game, that's totally fine. Yeah, you know, it's not for everybody, and that's okay. And I, And like I said, I like games... As we're doing this episode, as we've gone through this, I think I like my player skill to be somewhere in the medium mm, range. Not the 
highest priority. Yeah, because yeah. we'll get to some examples here at the bottom of the hour of some that I've actually just dropped because it was all player skill. I'm yeah. Like, oh, no, thank you. But I actually, so I was doing some research for this and Veridas, I think his name's on YouTube, their name. And that, so the, what I, I, direct quote from them is the leveling system represents not only the character's confidence but the player's confidence too mm. the leveling system in dark souls particularly is an expression not of how strong your character is well it is i suppose <laughs> <laughs> but it's an expression of what your character has accomplished which is so cool so slay this slay this enemy fought through this area took a shortcut meant for much higher levels whatever like I, I really mm -hmm. like that quote because like, I, I beat this boss and now I'm using its weapon. This is my trophy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you're like me, who likes the character skill more, it might, it's not as rewarding to say, oh, I got through this area. I want my character progression yeah. to mean that I'm becoming God mode. Yes. That's not going to happen. It does In this <laughs> game, but I really like the way that they said that. I do it's too. an expression of how <laughs> strong, an expression of what your character has accomplished, mm -hmm. not how strong they are. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, I like that too. That's like really your character, cool. you've yeah. accomplished a lot. I've played through the game like six times. <laughs> on 230 plus, that's you've on accomplished a lot. Yes. But there are still players better than you. Yep, absolutely. Like trying to, I tried v PvP because they had that. Um, and it was it was bad. I'm I'm not. <laughs> there are people way better than me. Yes. But I still love the game. Okay. So I'm not there for PvP. Yeah. Okay. So at the bottom of the hour, we're just gonna run through some games. We won't go as in detail yep. here, but we're gonna rank some games on, on these, where these they axes. fall on our spectrum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On on this on this criteria here. So we can't do this without talking about Terraria. Terraria. One of our favorite games. So if, for those of you that don't know, Terraria is a 2.5D procedural adventure game mm -hmm. right side scrolling, side -scrolling where Up and down, actually. you just play a no-name character and you adventure build get npcs defeat stronger and stronger a lot bosses. of people compare it to like 2d minecraft but i i personally I it's feel it's much more than that it's much much more than minecraft yeah, it's very different it's a very simplified explanation and that just comes from minecraft being the most yeah popular game ever like the only com comparables that they have building is building yeah building and it's spelunking yeah. right mm -hmm. but they're very very different in a lot of ways and terraria its core gameplay loop is your character doesn't have any abilities it just gets more damage and um more, more armor and more health and magic magic uh, yeah so your character is not like getting strength or intellect or stuff but you go out and adventure you can make mana crystals to you get more health you find hearts to make to better get gear. more health you get uh, yeah you find things to build stronger and stronger gear that will increase your damage mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but there are bosses that are really hard that are still gonna be a wall <laughs> that are still gonna be a wall so i so honestly where do you think this falls i feel like they're both pretty in the middle i think this is very high on character yeah, that's true. It's very high. Very high. You don't get through the game. But I still feel like the player skill is a little, it's still high. It's I like think, medium to I high. I think player skill is medium. But the medium. character is a little above it if I we're going like this. I would say it's medium. For me, I think Terraria falls on the medium for player skill. Mm. And that's because there are bosses, maybe not the last few, but there are, are times where you can just get gear strong enough to brute to, force yeah. your way through that's certain true. bosses. That's mm true. -hmm. But it's like, how do you get that stuff? Is is you grind yeah, but, and you, you use their skills. But, but you, that's true. But I say it's medium, not low because of that, because at the end you can't do that with certain bosses. Like Skeletron. <laughs> Skeletron's really hard. You gotta be pretty good at the game for that. And then Maybe also there are players that just do challenges where they, like no damage challenges. Yeah. I've seen one of those. We're like, holy cow, that, that can be done with minimum armor, mm -hmm. right? So... So I feel like, yeah. There's a lot of room to improve as a player in the game. Yeah, it's very character skill, uh, progressive, <laughs> high on that. Yes. Um, and then if you want to not improve your character at all, the player skill can then over not overshadow it, but overtake that. But yeah. that's just if you want They're in the main game. There are points, there will be walls. The reason why I think it's medium is there are walls that you have to get are mandatory as a skill point mm -hmm. to get through um, but there are also many times where you can just go 
grind through your problem. Like, I'm just going to get this gun. <laughs> or I can figure out this cheese. Yeah. Or this make, like, I can make this train cart to get through <laughs> this issue. Mm -hmm. So I would say uh, high character skill, medium, tie, medium depending high. on your play style. Mm -hmm. Medium, high. Yeah. For players. Okay. I wanted an example here. I'm going to lump these two together. Okay. Super Mario World and Rocket League. Okay. Rocket League. Tell me where you think these fall. Well, I know Rocket League is purely player skill because you're a little car mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and you drive around sh hitting the ball. Mm -hmm. It's like like car soccer. Yeah. <laughs> and just you just skill. have to be good at doing that. It's such a hard game. Your car doesn't get any upgrades, right? So I, I actually so. looked into this because I, I picked these two games. I wanted some games that were on the other side. Yeah. That were just purely player skill, no character progression. Overwatch is one of those, but we'll talk oh, yeah, about that. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a really good example uh, here, too. It's the opposite of League of yeah, Legends. Yeah, absolutely. So it's Super Mario World, bang, 1985. Mario can jump. You have your speed, like, in their power ups throughout, mm -hmm. but the power ups are directly tied to player skill because yeah. they change your movements and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's so high on player skill. Is that skill. the one where the like Tanuki suit was introduced? That was Super Mario World 2 or 3, okay. I believe. I don't know That Mario. was on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> but anyway, Mario platforming games are so high on skill because you have to time so much. And then Rocket League's the same thing. It's There's a, a giant metal ball flying through the air and your cars are literally rocket powered cars yep. and you have to be able to, to in real time jump and time and your angles yes. and get these into this small basket so these are very high rocket league is very, wild. very low to almost no character it's like zero almost zero <laughs> but rocket league's it actually fun league. i did the research on this and rocket league actually has a, a shred a shred of characters because the bodies of the car have different hitboxes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you were telling me about that. That makes sense. That's it. That's, but that's it. it. That, I don't know if that's... <laughs> that's, that's not it. the character progressing. That's just you choosing well, a different Well, you're character. playing the character. Yeah, right? that's right. So that's a, different, that's, that's a different stat that your character that's has true. in the game mm -hmm. based on how we've defined it. But it's also just to the point where character most players choose the same one. Right. Because they're like, because this like, is the Because like, okay, best. this has more hitboxes. I'm going to hit the car fast, like the ball. <laughs> Better. These are the best That's parameters for it all. Yeah. So then everybody situations. becomes that mm -hmm. car. <laughs> and then Mario too. It has, Mario, I would say, is a little higher because he does get power ups throughout mm -hmm. the game. But the, what's really interesting and so well designed about that game is the power ups co are completely linked to player skill. Mm -hmm. Right. You get bigger as Mario, you can jump higher. Right, yeah. you can run faster. Right. Or the Snooky suit you said you can fly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so. I wanted to touch on a couple of examples there. I, and honestly, we can just talk on about Overwatch right now, too. Yeah. Overwatch is uh, the same with kind of like Rocket League. It's a uh, player skill progression because you get this character, mm -hmm. they have their set abilities, and it's up to you to know when to time them and when, like, when to sequence mm -hmm. them. Um, a lot of characters have reload times. Um, so when you're reloading, you're pretty vulnerable, so you want to like get behind a wall, mm -hmm. but that's like with most shooters. Um, if you're a melee character, you have to be very careful of your mm -hmm. health. Um, oh yeah, your timing is crucial. So it's for absolutely character. zero I think character progression. Yeah, there's zero. There's nothing you can do to improve. Once you go into a match, mm -hmm. and even outside, there's no way to improve your there's abilities. There's no way to improve the character. Mm -hmm. so that's because a, they are set. That is a perfect example mm -hmm. of... Maximum. And then you know about League of Legends because I oh I do nothing. yeah so League of Legends is actually is it like on the opposite it's end? It's actually pretty high on both of these mm. I would say uh, because unlike it's a MOBA right so a multiplayer online battle arena five v five and you pick from this roster of characters like Overwatch but the character progression is actually really high in this game because I haven't played in years but you went from one to eighteen. And as you leveled, your character's health increased, their mana mm. increased, they got got to improve abilities, unlock abilities. Like, you only have four abilities, three and an ultimate. Okay. Passive, but the passive you don't use, right? Yeah, it's just there. Um, but do you unlock it? Do you unlock the passive, or is it just always it's, there? It's given to you from the beginning. Okay. You have, you have the passive that's like, you, you get bonus armor for this, right? Yeah. But it's just in effect. But there are usable abilities that you have two of. 
But throughout the game, 1 through 18, you're unlocking your abilities on your on your team, on your team, <laughs> on your action bar, and you're <laughs> upgrading them as you go. Yeah. And with the money you get from defeating minions and other players, you actually can go to the shop and buy items. Oh, that's mm -hmm. cool. So, yeah. yeah, Overwatch doesn't have items. <laughs> yeah, so League actually does it well where, and outside of the game now, they have it where you're... Um, your character can progress uh you as the player progress like they have so your account levels up oh, okay mm -hmm. yeah. and like overwatch has that too where your account levels up based on like how long you've played or how okay. much you've won but that it, does not matter doesn't yeah i guess i don't nothing. remember if it matters but no, it within matter game <laughs> to the your character, characters are play. leveling up but you have to have a it's just for bragging. You have rights. to have pretty high skill in mm -hmm. league to win the games. So I th I think um, for the player skill, you have to know what items. You have to have knowledge. You have yeah. to know w what time things are spawning. You have to know how to last hit minions. You have to know a lot <laughs> in this game. And there's a lot of precise timing and movement mm -hmm. of how to use your abilities, how to aim. Yeah. Right. So I think this when is the a enemy. You need to know. This is for Overwatch too, um, not Overwatch the second one. Overwatch also, As well. also <laughs> um, is knowing the enemy, knowing the enemy's character and what they can do. So practicing with a lot, mm -hmm. uh, very high on player skill. Yeah. And so if I had to talk about League, I think it's player skill would probably, like WoW, go from medium to high, yeah. depending on how it can go as high as you want it, mm -hmm. how much depth you want to get out of it, but you can still enjoy and have fun without like memorizing Spending everything mm -hmm. you can still improve but you got to have a basic competency or else yep. you're going to be stuck fighting bots mm -hmm. which i guess that's which a way to play that's yeah. a way to play as well it is but it's option. also i'd say medium pretty f d higher than a lot of mopas on progression yeah because your character each round it, it resets each round but one to 18 and six items very cool yeah, that's pretty cool okay another one we got yeah, we got time for another one here. What do, um, what do you think? I think about most fighting games. Yeah, we, are can't, also we have to talk about fighting games. Like, <laughs> so I'm going to talk about Soul Calibur three specifically, um, because you know it has your basic fighting thing where you can go you know one v one or or two v two matchups whatever versus, and that is pure player skill because you, the character you're playing doesn't improve throughout the fighting thing but there is another like gameplay option called chronicles where you make your own character and you choose its class and as you go through these missions and fighting all these things you actually level up mm. and um the skills that level up uh, i think are based on the weapon you're using yeah. and as you level up you also get access to new weapons mm. you get more health you get uh more combos to use with these weapons yeah. different combos and stuff so that I think is is still very high mm -hmm. in the player skill progression, but it's a part of a fighting game that actually adds character progression, yeah, that's which really I think cool. is super cool. A lot of them don't do that. Yeah. Like think about Smash Bros. Melee that we talked about. That's all player. Mm -hmm. And you can actually, I think, mm -hmm. also give them like different kinds of armor that augment their abilities. Yeah. That's a very good example. And we could game. keep doing this. We can keep going. Well, we're at forever. the bottom of the hour here. Yeah. So let me ask you real quick before we wrap up, which progression do you value more highly? Player that's, or character? That's difficult because I think it, it, it changes a lot. I like both equally. Okay. <laughs> cop out answer. It's very cop out tell answer. Tell us in the com tell us what you value. Because I, was, uh, I think I like character progression more because mm -hmm. I like new skills, new abilities, yeah. different things to do. I, that's where I am yeah. as an explorer for mm -hmm. a game. Yes. And I, I'm very much an explorer. And that's the point of this episode is to just think about when you play a game, where do you land? Which kind of progression do you value in a game? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that wraps it up. Uh, we'd love to hear about any examples of this axis for you, like why you like these games. Yeah, we only maybe you think about you. <laughs> maybe you think we're wrong about Terraria. <laughs> maybe maybe you think like, well, Modern WoW isn't like that. Let us know at sharediscoveryshow at gmail.com. Thanks again for BCTV for letting us put on this production. Thanks for joining me. You're Savannah. welcome. Let's Thanks for do... having me here. Yeah, I'm excited to do more episodes with you. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Do you have a sign off? Yes. Okay, um, hold, take... on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to do mine. You're okay. Um, All right, ready? Can I throw this? Yeah, go ahead.
Cool. Okay, so we're signing off. Thanks for joining us on episode 22 of Shared Discovery. Before we go, please make sure to have some fun, be kind to others, play some games, and sign us off, Savannah. And as always, take care, and we'll see you in the next one. Hey, I like that. That was a good one. See you next time.